In this lesson, we'll learn how we can start to work with the compositor view inside of 3ds Max. Okay, so at this point, we have our different states that have been set up for us, and we have our helper objects that have also been created in our previous lesson. So at this point, now we're pretty much ready to render this out. So when it comes to render this out, uh, it's pretty much the same steps that we looked at in one of our earlier lessons. We just need to make sure that in our state sets, we go to the render outputs, Let's start by going to Set Path. It's going to ask us if we want to create the default output path. Go ahead and click Yes. That will go ahead and set up a directory in your current 3ds Max project. And it's going to start to uh, render these out based on your state name. Now one thing that I will do is instead of outputting as a targa file, I'm going to output as an EXR. So I'll just add EXR to the output. Once again, hit Set Path just to make sure that all of those get updated. Now once I do that, I should be able to go into my render setup and just to double check things. Okay, you can see Save File has now been enabled and the proper path has been set. And again, it should do this for all of my different states. So at that point, all I should have to do now is go back to my state set and now just render all states. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let this run through. This will take a little bit of time. Oh, one thing that I actually did forget to do is in my states, um, one thing I need to do is go in and make sure that I do have, instead of a single frame output, I'm going to set up a range. So I'll just go ahead and just do the whole active time segment. So frame 0 to 100. Let's jump up here to our screen mask. Okay, looks like that got updated here as well. Okay, now let's try that again. Once again, render all states. There we go. And now we're starting at frame zero through the camera. And again, we're just going to let this go until it finishes up. This is going to take, again, quite a while to finish up. Okay, now once I'm finished up, you can see here's my different states that have all been rendered out as different passes. And inside of of each one of these, we have our different passes, or our different render elements in this case. All right, so at this point, now we have everything that has been rendered out. Now we're ready to take all of these and send these over to After Effects for compositing. Now before we do that, we need to go through our compositor view, uh, so that way we can actually gather up all of our different passes and all of our rendered information, so that way this can all be bundled up and sent to After Effects. So let's go in our state set window, let's go to compositor, and we're going to take advantage of the compositor view. Now there's actually two different types of compositor views in 3ds Max. The basic compositor view and the compositor view render elements. Now this is the one that we're going to want to use since we actually have a scene that incorporates render elements, which is what we looked at in one of our previous lessons. So we want to make sure that we use this one. So that way it does go through and gather up all the proper render elements. As soon as we click on this, it's going to go through and gather up all of our different elements and reveal those to us. So here's our different uh, render passes and the different render elements that make those up. We can see each one of those, and we can also see what that's going to look like in our final composite. Now at this point, we can actually make changes to the composited result directly in 3ds Max before we send that into After Effects. Now, one of the things that we also have here is um, sort of a layering issue or an ordering issue with these uh, different objects. So right now this screen mask, it's actually on top and I really don't necessarily want it to be. I'd like it to be a little bit further down. There's a couple of different ways that we can fix this. Um, the first thing to keep in mind is that the ordering or the stacking of these different render elements is based on the ordering of your state sets over here. So if I wanted my main pass to be on top of my screen mask in my compositor view, I can just take that, click, and drop it down below. There we are, so now my main pass is on top. And what I'll probably need to do is come in here and hit refresh. Now, if you're using render elements, what you'll see is a lot of time, whenever you hit refresh, it will kind of lose those. So instead of seeing my render elements, I'm back to just my basic compositor view, which is what we would get here. 
So that's not a problem. Doesn't mean anything's been broken. We just close that window and let's reopen it. Give this just a moment to collect those up. And there we go. So now you can see my screen is at the very bottom. And everything else from my main pass is up top. So now we can see our final result. Now at the moment, we're seeing kind of the result of the beauty pass up top. So what I could do is just open this up. And let's just turn off the result of that beauty. Okay, and now we can see what is right now the next layer down, which is the direct illumination. Now, let's go ahead and just do a basic composite of all these different render elements. So with this direct illumination, we'll set this to add. All right, let's come in and continue to do this. So we'll set this next one to add. That's basically the process that we go through of um, compositing all these different elements back together is we just need to set them to an additive mode. All right, and the specular for now, I'll just leave that as it is. So now we can see direct illumination, indirect illumination, reflections, all composited together. We have full control over um, things like the opacity of these. So if I wanted to take my reflection, which is going to be right here, um, let's say maybe I wanted my reflections to be uh, a little more subtle. I could just take the opacity for that layer and maybe just set it down to 50%. So now if you look, my reflections have been dialed down pretty significantly. In my case, though, I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 100. But we do have that control if we want it. Um, now one thing that I will do is take my ambient occlusion. Now this one I would really like to be up top. So what I could do is just grab that ambient occlusion click and drag. I'm going to drag that up to the top. There we go. So basically just reordering these. So now my occlusion sits up top. And I'll take the blend mode for that and set it to multiply. So that way we can make the white areas transparent. If you turn this on or off, you can see there's a very, very subtle difference here. You can start to see some of the shadows that pop a little bit more with that ambient occlusion over the top versus what we have if we turn it off. But having this level of control is really, really nice, being able to preview the result of our composite before we ever send that over into After Effects. Now, another nice thing is the fact that we can actually do a pretty high level of uh, color correction directly from this point. So let's say, for example, maybe I have one of these uh, layers, like my uh, direct illumination, my direct diffuse. What I could actually do is left click on that connection that's coming in and I could insert a color correct node. Okay, so now if I come in here and start to expand some of these basic parameters, we can come in here and maybe start to do a little bit of a hue shift. and You can see how that's starting to change over here. So we can come in here and uh, do some color correction, uh, brightness and contrast adjustments, and all of those will be reflected in these different composites once we take this over into After Effects. Now, if you did not want to go to After Effects at this point, maybe you're not using After Effects for your pipeline, what you could do is take the result of this output and then output a PSD. Or you could do a PSD sequence, and it will actually create a layered PSD file for every frame and uh, basically just the result of this composite. Now in my case, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take this directly to After Effects using this state set. So going through this step of collecting up all of your different render passes and all of your different render elements, that part is very important. This is the first step that we want to go through. Once we have everything gathered up here in the compositor view, now we can go over to our compositor link. And at this point, we can start to output a lot of different uh, elements from 3ds Max over to After Effects. This compositor link is specifically designed to take these elements to After Effects. So we can take out 3ds Max cameras. We can ta even take light sources into After Effects. Uh, solids, which are pretty much our planes that we set up in our previous lesson for the television screen. Nulls, 
which are going to be the point helper objects, and then footage, which footage is really just all of these rendered passes and rendered elements that we have over here. So with all of these turned on, let's go ahead and start by creating a link. Okay, I'm going to output this into the project folder. I'll put this in the After Effects files. And this is going to output a state output file, or an SOF file. And we can just call this um, anything that we want. Maybe we can just call this something like Television Scene. All right. And now what 3ds Max is going to do is go up and gather uh, all the information from this scene and bundle it into that SOF file. So now we can take that SOF file directly into After Effects and uh, get all of this information exactly the way that we have it set up, um, as well as all of our state helper objects with just one simple click. All right, now before we can take this into After Effects, there are a few plugins that we need to install in order to get this SOF file to translate properly back and forth. So in the next lesson, I'll show you how you can set up these files um, for After Effects and then how we can start to bring these files back and forth between 3ds Max and After Effects.